Skateboarding has evolved a lot throughout the years, and the things people skate has evolved too. From surfers cruising the streets in the 50s, to people sashing empty pools and vert ramps in the 70s, and then eventually in the late 80s and early 90s, people started skating things out in the streets, which is where a lot of the spots in today's videos get their recognition from. Throughout the years, a lot of these iconic skate spots have experienced changes and have been torn down or skate stopped, but it doesn't take away from the history these spots have and the countless skate videos they've been in. So today, I'll be telling you about the history of some of the most iconic skate spots today and how some of them have changed street skateboarding forever. So sit back, grab a slice of pizza, and then grab the biggest hammer you have, because I need you to smash the like button into oblivion. So without taking any more time, let's jump right into this video. El Toro. El Toro is possibly one of the most notoriously recognized skate spots on this list, and is mostly because of how terrifying it looks. It's a 20 star drop with handrails on both sides, and it used to have one down the middle as well, although it was removed in 2008, and I guess an attempt to stop people from skating it, even though that obviously didn't stop anybody. The first person to take the hit of ollieing this 20 stair beast was no one else but Don Nguyen, landing it first try to make it even more impressive. The ollie is what really put him on the map, and after the him, only a handful of tricks were landed down El Toro. Most notably, it was kickflip by Dave Pachensky, kickflip meloned by Jaws, frontside 180'd, backside 180'd, nollied, and sorta tray flipped by Chris Jocelyn. He landed it, but he didn't roll away, so most people don't count it, but that's literally it. Now, that's about the only thing that people have done just by jumping off of it. The handrail seems a little bit more accessible and has been done by more people, but it's still very impressive. And unfortunately, in late 2019, El Toro was torn down, reconstructed, and skate stopped. And we haven't really seen anybody hit it since. Some skaters, such as Nyjah, say that it's possible. Yeah, huh, that's all they're doing. It's still fully sustainable. But we have yet to see anybody attempt to try it again. Wallingburg. Wallingburg is a massive four block that is located in a San Francisco high school, measuring six feet high and 22 feet long, making it an absolutely insane gap. Just so you can get an idea of how crazy Wallingburg is, it's basically like trying to jump the length of El Toro, but with only one third of the height. I'm sure you can understand how difficult it is to land, and because of this, Wallingburg has claimed its fair share of victims. The first person to have the balls to ollie it was Mark Gonzalez, all the way back in 1991. And then it was kickflip mailing grabbed by Danny Gonzalez in 1999. And then in 2004, Thrasher hosted their first competition there, where Andrew Reynolds frontside flipped it, Daryl Staten switched backslide 180'd it, and Lindsey Robertson heel flipped it. And then in 2005, Chris Cole landed an absolutely massive tray flip down Wallingburg, which really opened the floodgates and brought a new wave of hype to the spot. And after that, Wallingburg was featured in many skate videos, and listing all the tricks that haven't done it would take too long for this video. But what's really impressive about Wallingburg is that unlike a lot of skate spots in this video, it still stands to this day. And if you wanted, you could still land something down it that's never been done before, and you could cement yourself into skateboarding history. Carlsbad. If you've never seen this spot before, you might ask yourself, what makes it so special? There's no dangerous drop or insane gap. But what makes Carlsbad so hard is the mental games it plays on skaters. In skateboarding, the details matter a lot. And if you ask any skater that has jumped Carlsbad, they'll tell you all about them. The small wall at the bottom may not look like much, but it's enough to make an illusion of you being closer than you think or expect causing a lot of skaters to freak out midair, which is the last thing you want to happen. Then there's a crack in the run-up, making you lose speed, and then it's close enough that you don't have enough time to make it back up. And finally, even though it may not look like it on video, the landing is actually at an uphill angle, making landing Carl's bad very hard because you instantly lose speed when you land, and if you're not perfectly balanced, you will slide out. With all those factors combined, Carl's bad is notorious for being a challenging gap, and has claimed many victims with people only being able to land basic tricks on it. But that was all until Jeremy Ray made history by absolutely murdering Carl's bad in his part secondhand smoke. After his part came out, he opened the doors for everybody else to try harder tricks that were thought to be not possible. Skaters from all around the world were coming to Carl's bad to try to make history, and the tricks that were landed could be made into a video itself. So from 2000 on, Carl's bad would be featured in many skateboarders' video parts, most notably Andrew Reynolds, Eric Ellington, and Chris Coles. Carl's bad would also have a few competitions hosted at it and was skated until 2012 when the school Carl's Battle was in was being remodeled, causing the iconic spot to unfortunately be torn down. Hollywood High The home of skateboarding has a lot of famous and iconic skate spots, and Hollywood High is no exception. 
Located in Hollywood High School, the stairs leading up to it feature an iconic 16 stair on one side and the lesser known 12 stair on the other side. There aren't really any records for who skated it first, but it's located in LA where a lot of the world's best skaters live and the spot has been featured in many video parts, Instagram clips, and movies. You don't really need to know skateboarding to recognize this iconic spot. There's been a lot of really impressive tricks landed at Hollywood High. Some worth mentioning are Nyjah Houston's backside 270 lip and kickflip backside lip, Chris Jocelyn's ghetto bird, and Angel Muna's double forward flip board down the 12. Oh my god! <laughs> like, that's just totally nuts. And I know I'm missing out a lot of other iconic tricks that have been landed, but there's just far too many for me to really get into it. And thankfully, despite the crowds that Hollywood High draws and the amount of people that skated 24-7, even during school hours, the spot still stands to this day. And even the faculty at the school seem to know about the skateboarding culture around it and still respect the skaters that go and skate it every single day. And as long as it remains in one piece, people will continue to skate it. Leon 25 in the quiet town of Lyon, France lays one of skateboarding's most gnarly stair sets that to this day has only been attempted by three skaters. And justifiably so, this 25 stair gap is absolutely massive and without a doubt is the tallest stair set in skateboarding and possibly the highest skate spot too. There's no rail or anything that could be considered comfy, it's just you and 25 stairs and a bone shattering 15 foot drop. A lot of things look smaller on video than in real life, but even this looks big on camera, so imagine how big it actually looks in real life. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering who would be brave enough to hook themselves off this thing? Like who would even think of doing that in the first place? Well meet Ali Bulala, the original sender of skateboarding. At the time, and still to this day, Ali isn't known for being the best technical skater, but he is known for being one of the most daring, and willing to try almost anything that was put in front of him. But when it came to Leon 25, it seems that he had met his match. On his first attempt, he would land pretty much perfectly, but his board would betray him and literally explode to pieces under his feet. You would think that would be a good sign to stop, but nope, he kept going, and during his next attempt, he would make the mistake of kicking his board out from under him and landing and injuring his feet, making him unable to do it again. It wasn't until 13 years later that somebody else had the balls to send it, and it was nobody else but Aaron Jaws Hamoki. At first, it seemed as if history would repeat itself again. Joss was left with a torn MCL, leaving him out of the game for 6 months until he fully recovered. The next time he came back, he wasn't only battling breaking his board and his wheel was literally falling off, but also security trying to kick him out. So the next day he came back and showed the security pictures of him from Tony Hawk's video game. I'm not even joking, this is actually what happened and they gave him one hour to land it, and that's really all he needed. In that time, he managed to make skateboarding history and land one of the most iconic stair sets in skateboarding by doing an ollie melon grab. Jaws celebrated this historic moment with his dad, friends, and Ali Bulala, the skater that inspired him to try this insane stair set in the first place. And to this day, only one other skater attempted Leon 25, and it's nobody else but Aurelien Gerard, the French native. He, in my opinion, is the only skater that makes Leon 25 almost, just almost look small. Especially with his first attempt where he nearly nails it. He took a few more tries but stopped after he made the same mistake as Ollie and kicked out his board from under him, making him injure his heels. At the Leon 25, just one try can result in a career ending injury, so for a lot of skaters, it's just not worth it. And I don't know if we'll ever see someone else land it again, but if it does happen, I believe Aurelien and Gerard will be the one to do it. But for now, the only person to tame the beast is the legendary Aaron Jaws Hamoki. Hubba Hideout Hubba Hideout was made to be a pedestrian walkway, but over time turned out to be a lot more than just that. Hubba Hideout was discovered by skaters in the late 80s, but it was actually not named by the skaters that found it. And it was known as Hubba Hideout by the homeless people that would hang out there because it was a rarely used path that was tucked away, providing a great place to do drugs. But ironically, despite what was going on at Hubba Hideout for years, the police would never get involved until skaters arrived. Isn't it funny how they prioritized stopping kids from skateboarding over literally illegal activity? <laughs> It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> it is also why we call some ledges hubbas. Yes, it is entirely because of this skate spot. And I'm sure a lot of you didn't even know that. 
But anyway, the spot gained popularity quickly throughout the skateboarding community after Wayne Spire's Crick Grind at the Hubba was featured in Thrasher magazine. And after that, it was skated by a lot of the greatest skaters of the time, including, but not limited to, Jamie Thomas, Chris Lambert, Jason Dill, Jeremy Ray, and Steve Olson. A lot of legendary tricks were landed on it and were featured in video parts and in skateboarding magazines, but nothing was more iconic than Eric Costin's backside nose blunt for the cover of Transworld in 1998. Unfortunately, a few short years later, Hub Hideout was skate stopped and eventually totally destroyed, leaving the spot to live forever in historic videos and some video games. Despite a lot of these skate spots being totally destroyed nowadays and them not even existing, it's important for us to still learn about them and still remember them, because they're what brought us to where we are today. Now I know I missed a lot of skate spots in this video, and if you guys enjoyed this video, I will make a part 2 and part 3, and I'll make however many you guys want, as long as you guys actually like them, so make sure to let me know if you did like this video by liking and commenting, and if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an upload. I also want to give a huge shout out to this very small channel called Brutal truth his videos on these legendary spots are what inspired me to make this one and they really helped me with researching and finding footage for these spots anyway that's all i have for you today i'll see you next week